hi there hope all of you are doing well in today's connect let us spend some quality time and understand how to analyze your payment reports if you are already selling on amazon.com I am sure most of you are using software tools in order to review your financials towards the end of every single month. While we don't have anything against uses of software tools, we strongly believe as sophisticated sellers, you should spend time into the reports that Amazon provides. Try to spot the gaps within the data that Amazon provides and then analyze your numbers in order to get a true and a real view of how your business is performing. With that context, let me share my screen and walk you through a couple of important sections. When I first look into my payment section, I see a couple of views. The first view that I have is statement view. Within the statement view, within the billing cycle, I get to see what is my beginning balance and then the sales revenue and the sum of all the expenses that I incurred during that settlement period and also the reserve in case if Amazon is holding any money back. So that also I should be able to view over this section. And then I have something called as transaction view. In this section, you will be able to see all the transactions that were recorded on Amazon for a specific time duration. In addition to that, from this drop down, you will be able to select many more important options, for example, refunds. If I want to know how many refunds happened during a specific time period, this is the place where I should come and check, right? And then I have my next section called as all statements. All statements as in, we know Amazon pays out the money once in every 14 days. So every 14 days, whenever you are receiving your payment, you get to see what is that money. And you also get to see which all transactions led to that payout right and then you have the next section called as disbursements it is similar to whatever number that you see here for example here i see the payout is close to three thousand dollars right and here also within my disbursements i should be able to see the same number you see the same number is showing up here right so this amount has not been paid to me yet likewise in the next section you will also see something called as reports repository now remember my friends name any of the software tools that are available in the market today most of those tools extract data from reports repository and then provide you insights in terms of your p and l assuming you are looking into your numbers every single month and we know amazon pays you money once in 14 days let's say if you want to review your numbers for the month of September, then you would be analyzing those figures in the month of October, maybe by mid of October. On mid of October, you may look into your software tools and assume that the numbers that you are looking at are accurate, but they are not accurate. That is exactly what I'm going to prove today. In order to validate my claim, we need to get into a couple of more insights that we get from Amazon once again. Now, what we have done is within Seller Central, when you come into the fulfillment report section, you will see an option called as all orders, right? So we just pulled out all the numbers from this all orders section because we want to look at the numbers for the month of September. In this example, we are looking into a couple of order IDs for the month of September. Now you see here in September, I see there are in total 25 orders, right? As per Amazon, in this example, during the month of September, I had in total 25 orders, isn't it? Now, when I look into my reports repository, I see only 22 orders were recorded. This implies that if you are looking into your reports repository section for analyzing your p and on a periodic basis, you may not be looking at your accurate figures. All right, let me explain this in detail. Now, as per my all orders section, I see there are 25 orders in total. Whereas, as per my reports repository, I see there are only 22 orders. All right. Now, as per my settlement reports, settlement reports as in like you have this transaction view, you also have a section called as all statements. And when you select this all statements, 
you will be able to extract a couple of Excel spreadsheet. And when you consolidate all those Excel spreadsheet and put those numbers together and remove all the duplicate entries, this is exactly what you get to, right? Now, as per my settlement reports also, I see there are 22 orders. Now, as per my transactions report, here also I see there are 22 orders. Now, remember, as per my all orders section, I see there are 25 orders. Whereas, as per my settlement reports and as per my reports repository and as per my transaction reports, I see there are only 22 orders, right? So, there are a couple of orders which are missing from these reports. Unfortunately, most of the software tools fetch information from your reports repository in order to tell you whether you are doing good or bad, isn't it? If that is so, don't you see that there is a big gap here? Isn't it the responsibility of software tool provider to tell you that there are a couple of inconsistencies in the numbers that they are reporting? Do you think they would really communicate this to you? I don't think so, isn't it? Now, with this context, if you try to spend some more time and deep dive into these numbers, you will be able to clearly see the differences as in why does this gap exist. Alright, coming back to this spreadsheet, while I have my numbers from all orders section and then I have all the data points from settlement reports, reports repository and then the transactions view. Now when I try to reconcile, I have noticed that the sections that are marked in green are very much available in all four reports. I am able to see in my all orders section. I am able to see them in my settlement reports, I am able to see in my reports repository and then I can also see them in my transaction view which means I don't have any problems with these order IDs. I know that in the month of September I have got a total of 25 orders. Out of 25 orders the sections that are marked in green as in the order numbers that are marked in green I see these order IDs are showing up in settlement reports reports repository and also in my transaction view, I don't have any problems with these order IDs. But the problem that we currently have here is we are unable to view the remaining order IDs in any of these reports. And unfortunately, most of your software tools are fetching numbers from reports repository, which means you are being misled, isn't it? Well, coming back to the order IDs that are not showing up in your reports repository, we are not able to see these orders in our reports repository because the payments for these orders has happened in the month of October. Yes, while we got the orders in September, customer processed the money or Amazon received the payment in the month of October, which means these orders will show up in your next month's report. They may not show up in your current month's report. That's the first observation. And the second most important thing, if you look into your reports repository, you get to see a couple of order IDs which do not exist in your all orders report for the month of September, correct? Now, when you try to understand this a little further, the reason why these orders are showing up here is because you actually received these orders in the month of August, but the payments for these orders happen in the month of September and that is exactly why these order IDs are showing up in the month of September. This implies that if you are analyzing your numbers towards the end of the month, maybe towards the mid of next month, don't assume that you are looking into your PNL for that particular month. Because in your PNL or in your transactions, you may have order IDs which may not belong to the period that you are looking at. For example, if I want to analyze the data points for the month of September, when I extract the numbers using software tools, I could be looking at order IDs which are from August. Or I could also be missing out on order IDs that belong to the month of September, correct? With that perspective, we believe we have given you some level of clarity in terms of how you should be looking into your numbers. Don't blindly look at your software tools and assume that your business is on a right track. It's very important you as a sophisticated seller, you should spend time to analyze the data points that Amazon is providing you, number crunch, and be very clear in terms of your p &L. Only then you will be in a better position to manage your business well. Alright, with that context, I hope you learned something new today. If that is the case, I request you to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends. Have a nice day ahead and goodbye.